Welcome back, my friends, to another update for the touchscreen mini panel, TMP. As usual, if you are new to this do-it-yourself project, the previous videos should provide the necessary background. Well, it's been 8 months since the last video, and we have both firmware and hardware changes this time around. In this video, we will go through some of the new features, the hardware changes, and how you can do the upgrade. Starting from the features, we will still have the familiar layout here, but the top row of the page selection buttons are no longer divided or are specific to one pane or another. Instead of switching through two or three banks of buttons, you now have all the available pages at a glance. To open a page, you touch a button and then you have a choice. One more touch to launch the page on the side you want, like this. Let's take a closer look into the Waypoint page. What is new is a built-in database of airports of all kinds. There are VOR and also some aviation waypoints. So you can see that with 40,000 airports, it can cover many small airfields. It is even include balloon ports to get you prepared for Flight Sim 2024. The raw information of all these are uh, gathered from various online databases. Now take a look at the actionable data in these records. For example, touch this paper airplane icon and the location information is automatically transferred into the situation page, immediately available for navigation use. That's not new. What's been added is an ATIS frequency available for the airport. You can use this antenna icon to push the frequency 132.4 onto the radio page. Now, the number is put into the frequency pool for you to swap it into one of the radios. Las Vegas Airport information, and Mike get to Wind calm. Visibility 10. Sky clear. Let's move that audio. The Navigate to and the Antenna buttons work with the VOR waypoints as well. This comes with a frequency of 116.9. Give the antenna a touch and you have it pushed to the frequency pool down here. Guess what? All this data comes with a cost. It currently amounts to over 5 megabytes of storage. And that's one of the reasons why we needed the hardware upgrade. Let's cut to the schematic. We have the four rotary encoders and the 7-inch Nexion touchscreen. They remain the same. But the ESP32 has become an ESP32 S3. There are additional reasons why we had to change the microcontroller. You can read about that in the Design Notes PDF. The main benefit is the S3 MCU offers us more flash memory for our mini file system. To upgrade from an existing TMP with the 44 pin S3, you obviously need to rewire all the pins. There is now also an additional resistor pair to shift the 5 volt logic level down to 3.3 for the ESP. You probably will ask, is this hardware upgrade a requirement? Actually, no. I'm able to keep the ESP32 Classic controller alive for the TMP for now. To give you a summary, here are what you gain with the S3 upgrade. Even with the good old ESP32, there's room for the complete airports and VOR database. But for some reasons, I cannot get the internet connections to function together with the little FS file system under the ESP32. So Wi-Fi has been disabled there. We don't know how long the ESP Classic will be supported. If you're building a new unit, definitely go with the S3. Next, we'll take a break from the hardware and go back to round up the features. 
We are used to staring at a situation page and know that we can open it on the left side or as a full size page, but not on the right pane. There are times, for instance, we are playing with the autopilot for the 737 on the left side and not being able to keep track of the situation data. Now, finally, we can open the versions of the situation page on the right. There's also something new hiding in the full size situation page. Notice these tick marks on the sides. As you are approaching your selected waypoint, the two scales will pop up. The horizontal one depicts your distance or deviations from the approach track. Remember, your approach course is the directions being indicated here, which you can adjust. I will use SLU to reposition the aircraft so we can demonstrate. You will steer towards the dot to intercept, like the CDI. Next, the vertical scale is similar to a glide slope, but it is not. It actually indicates the glide path angle that you are on. For instance, when the dot is at the center, you are on the 3 degree glide path. You would again go towards the dot to get on the 3 degree line. This is available only when the elevation of your waypoint is known. You can verify the waypoint's elevation here. Again, bear in mind that everything being shown in the approach view is based on the waypoint, not the one-way threshold. Okay, I hope you find that useful. By the way, these new features are applicable on both microcontrollers and should you decide to upgrade to the ESP32 S3, you now have the opportunity to build or rebuild your mini panel using one of these printed circuit boards. They work as the carrier boards for your S3 development module. You can mount the encoder directly onto the PCB or you can choose one to connect them with sockets and cables. Here are some photos of the assembled units. Using a PCB doesn't necessarily make building the project any easier, but it does look a bit more presentable than using jumper wires when you finish. And here is the versions with the encoders mounted on the PCB, minimizing the number of necessary cables. The circuit board design files or the Gerber files are included in the zip package. The How to Build PDF has suggestions on how to use the PCBs and the information on how to find a company to order your own copy of these PCBs for just a few dollars. And on that note, before this video comes to a close, let me remind you of the documentations folder, which contains all the up-to-date information on how to build and how to use the TMP. One last thing, I have switched to using the platform I.O. as the IDE for development. However, as usual, you don't need to do anything with the source file or build any code. The binaries for both MCUs and the Nixion displays are included in the zip. So to make life easier, I recommend you to just take advantage of the binaries and use the flash download tools from Expressives. Thank you for watching. Be seeing you.